Hey you guys, what is going on? It is your girl Najwa. Thank you for joining my channel. Please do me a favor if you have not already, go ahead and click the like and subscribe button. Click the bell so you always know whenever I post a video. So I really just want to use this time to just say that I, I really believe that this case got out of hand. I really believe that Amber Heard truly was a victim of sexual, physical, mental abuse and toxic internet culture took this labeled this woman as um, a fake victim, something that happens a whole lot, victim blaming, something that happens a whole lot within the incel community and the fem cell community. It's not just incels, their female counterparts are doing it as well. And what kind of world do we live in, guys? What kind of world do we live in when that is the case? Now, there will be a lot of far right or incel type characters who might say, well, you guys fought for feminism. So you want to be equal. So if you want to be equal, then I have all the right to beat your ass like a man. You know, you want it to be equal which is just asinine for Amber Heard and Johnny Depp's child. One of the points of explosion, because people on TikTok are, I, I, I do, I'm, I'm not with TikTok. I really am not. You know, I go on there from time to time to look up very, very specific research stuff. But apart from that, I just find this sort of cesspool of conspiracy theories and, um, you know, what seems like this incel and femcel community just really tearing people apart and they seem like they don't have any emotional intelligence they seem like yes they they, they seem like very very amateurish detectives and it seems very intellectually um lacking in some way i don't know if it's like an educational thing I don't know if it's, you know, that they have been exposed to extreme adversities in their life, like we talked about, like poverty or domestic violence or, um, you know, uh, loneliness. I, I don't know what it is, but TikTok just explodes. You know, like I said on one video, I think about Harry and Meghan, you know, like, no, 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 this was about Selena uh, Gomez and Hailey Bieber. You know, like Selena Gomez or Hailey Bieber said, they'll say like A, you know, A and B. And then, you know, internet culture, TikTok, Instagram, Reddit, you know, YouTube, they'll take that and it'll become B, C, D, E, F, G, X, Y, Z, you know, all the way through the alphabets. And that's how I view TikTok. And that is exactly how this Amber Heard trial got out of, out of hand. You know, Amber Heard has said herself that you put this trial really in the hands of the public and the public, you know, let's let's just speak about this real quick because I got some statistics for you. This is the percentage of U.S. single males sinking a relationship or dates, okay? Now, in 2019, that was 61%, okay? I got these quotes from um, a Pew Research via CNN. In, in 2019, 61% of U.S. single males were seeking a relationship or dates, and in 2022, that number dropped to 50%. That is a drastic drop in a very small amount of time. Okay, the next one. So this one is U.S. adults ages 18, and these are all from a CNN uh, study. So U.S. adults, this is, and this one is from General Social Survey. U.S. adults ages 18. 18 to 30 who have not had sex in the past year so 18 to 30 who have not had sex in the past year men was 28 percent women was 18 percent and then from this study from the hill this is just a section that's pulled here so and, and if you want to look up this video it, it explains this all flawlessly you know sort of this well, I'm going to explain what this concept is in a bit. So it says men in their 20s are more likely than women in their 20s to be roman romantically uninvolved, sexually dormant, friendless, and lonely. They stand at the vanguard of an epidemic of declining marriage, sexuality, and relationships that afflicts all of young America. And then from there... Um, um, 
So from there, they go on to explain how marriage has always been a staple of American society and how, you know, people who are married are less inclined to have depression, less inclined to have anxiety, less inclined to commit crimes, etc. Um, which, you know, if you don't want to be married, okay, but, you know, like, it is what it is. So then Scott Galloway, who is sort of an expert on this, he's a professor of marketing at NYU Stern School of Business, he goes on to say, online dating, which is doubled, now is about half of relationships in the top 20% of men in terms of attractiveness get about 60% of the interest. So on these online dating sites, you know, the top 20% of men rated in terms of socially accepted attractiveness, etc., get about 60% of the interest. And he says you end up with a group of men who are more prone to conspiracy theory, more prone to misogynistic content, more prone to believe that climate change does not exist. Okay? Why do I say all of this? Because these men, these lonely, angry, sad men and their female counterparts, literally vilified an abuse victim and held up on a pedestal a guy who is a drug addict and an alcoholic and who beat his wife. The fact that the fact that people prop this abuser and this drug addict and this alcoholic up, you know, and we clearly see that he is not well, that right there is reflective of the mental state that society is in. I feel like that is very, very reflective. And a woman lost her life. She lost her credibility. She lost her career. And um, th that's what I wanted to get to the point I wanted to get to. One thing that we can rest for sure with is that all things that are in the dark come to the light. And those who are attempting to navigate through life with these blinders on, um, pretending to be the victim when they have been probably held a certain amount of privilege. And really what it is is that they're just afraid. It's just fear, okay? All of these, you know, Trump supporters, incels, femcels, I feel like they are all just walking around with their fear, fears on their sleeves, um, walking around um, with, with, with some idea in their head of when their, their people and, and their family had their gl glory days or when men like them had their glory days. But they're not emotionally intelligent enough to understand, okay, I'm human. I am human. And the person next to me and the person next to me is also a human. And I have to try and show myself compassion. I have to try and be there for the people who are around me. I have to try to speak up for the underserved and the underprivileged. I have to not always think about myself. Those of us who are aware of these social injustices, those of us who have compassion in our hearts to see when another human being needs a hand up, needs lifting off the ground. For those of us who want to speak up for the marginalized, for the hurt, for the persecuted, we have to continue to have the courage to speak up so I think that I have ranted enough. You know my feelings now, and let's get into some of this stuff. Now, the first thing that I want to read is an article from the from the Time. Um, sorry, from Time Magazine, and this is from their U.S. Courts section. It is entitled "The Depp Heard Trial Perpetuates the Myth of the Perfect Victim." It says. Uh, it shows a picture of Amber Heard looking very, very sad. It says Amber Heard waits before the jury announced a split verdict in favor of both Johnny Depp and Amber Heard on their claim and counterclaim in the Depp versus Heard civil defamation trial at the Fairfax uh, County Circuit Courthouse in Fairfax, Virginia on June 1st, 2022. So it says victim advocates Victim advocates hoped that five years after hashtag Me Too went viral, our culture would have developed a nuanced understanding of harassment and assault. Domestic abuse, in particular, 
is messy and complicated. The victim often stays with the perpetrator, fearing economic, social, or physical repercussions. Sometimes the victim fights back, and victims can be flawed. They don't need to be pure or sober to tell the truth. But social media strips away nuance. We're left instead with myths. One such myth is the perfect victim, and that's in quotation marks. The perfect victim is an innocent. She doesn't drink or do drugs. As a result, she has a clear memory of her assault. She has corroborating evidence, but not too much evidence because that would indicate she's vindictive and plan to speak out. Now I'm going to pause right there. Yes, yes. Think back to the Drake Bell trial with the girl who accused him of sexual assault. She was young. She was clearly, clearly very, very innocent and very um, new to her adulthood, honestly. She, she was just, you could tell she was quite naive. You could tell she was young. Um, she was crying the entire time. Her voice was trembling and shaking all while she was talking. And you did not see that with Amber Heard as much. Amber Heard, to me, very much read as a person who... They had cried so much. They had endured so much. And they were not going to let this person take their pride away. They were not going to let this person diminish them to a stupid little girl. Okay? That doesn't mean that she was not abused. You can tell this woman was abused. You can tell in the pain of her stories. You can tell in her, the accounts from her friends and family. You can tell from Johnny Depp admitting on certain recordings. You can tell. You can tell that this woman has been abused if you have emotional intelligence like we talked about. But people see her and they see her not being a little girl blathering over her words, you know, and they automatically assume that she is lying. They see that she has gathered tons of evidence against this guy. And that's, that's exactly what this Time article says. She has corroborating evidence, but not too much evidence, because that would indicate she's vindictive and plan to speak out. Right? And we've seen that. We've seen that. Specifically women, I know you've seen a lot of that. But men are victims of this same toxic society that we live in as well. But I know women out there, you've seen that a lot, whether it's, it was in your workplace, yeah, this is ringing a bell, whether it was in university or school or in public transportation. Do you remember some of this where somebody gaslit you? But maybe because of the way you delivered something, maybe you were a little bit too confident in your delivering, or maybe you, you know, were, I don't know, speaking a little bit too much. You know, maybe the, the person you were speaking with wasn't quite on the same level as you. And so they just labeled you as a big mouth and vindictive and they dismissed you. Do you guys remember some of that? Men out there, have you had those moments? Do you remember some of that? This is what I'm talking about. This culture of really not being emotionally intelligent, of trying to show compassion for a fellow human being. So I'm going to continue Oh, and I don't know if I told you, this is written by Elana. This this article is written by Elana Doctorman, and this was published on June 2nd, 2022. So Elana continues. Why am I calling her? Elan Iliana. Iliana. So this, this article was written by Iliana Doctorman on June 2nd, 2022. So Ileana continues, in fact, when she comes forward, she does so reluctantly. She cuts off contact with her abuser as soon as the abuser takes place, as soon as the abuse takes place. She does no wrong at the office, in relationships, as a mother or daughter. She's never lied about anything ever in her entire life. She dresses appropriately. She's ideally virginal. She's simplistic. She does not exist. So that right there, again, plays on this idea. And I feel like many of the men in the incel communities, you know, 
they they have this picture in their mind of this perfect virginal woman that they haven't found yet. I mean, it reminds me of that guy who went on that shooting spree on the um, college campus. It's it's these are these are these are men who really don't like a woman who speaks up for herself, you know, and, you know, that that can't just be solved. That can't be solved by speculation. They need to look at their specific um, mental health journey. They look they need to look at their family uh, dynamic. You know, it could be something to do with their parents, with their childhood. Anyway. So, Ileana uh, continued on to say, Johnny Depp accused his ex-wife Amber Heard of defaming him by publishing a 2018 Washington Post op-ed in which she called herself a public figure representing domestic abuse, abuse without ever naming her abuser. Ever since... Ever since the trial began in April, users on TikTok have compared Heard to this mythical perfect victim and found that she did not live up to that impossible standard. Now, this was one of the most grotesque things that I saw as well. People themselves, women themselves who had been abused, coming on, trying to almost just get a little pat on the back from the clear incels or, you know, pro, pro men crowd by saying I'm an abuse victim myself and I would never do this I would never do that how can you call yourself a woman how can you call yourself a woman when a man has literally sexually abused a woman with a vodka bottle and th this that's that's not enough for you that's not enough for you on top of being having been abused she needs to be sweet virginal kind volunteered for the Girl Scouts, volunteered for church bake sales. Are you serious? Are you serious, man? And you know what? Just, I don't want to veer off of the, the article too much, but there's this thing that I see online too, where men and women, women who are like, they have internalized misogyny, and and most likely women who have internalized misogyny, I really believe it's from a misogynistic man in their life. And it could be their husband, it could be their brother, it could be their father. But in an attempt to please this person who will never, ever be pleased by, by you, never, ever, you know, you try to show that you have your own, you don't have your own mind, which is so ass backwards. That's why I just said it wrong. You try to show that you don't have your own mind and you try to lower yourself, make yourself smaller and please this abuser by also renouncing women who have been through abuse, you know, or by not acknowledging when misogyny happens. And that's this internalized misogyny journey, you know, and I see it. I see it on social media. It is the freakiest thing I've ever seen in my life. On Instagram, on TikTok, on Twitter, I will see videos. Um, I'm not talking about just text posts. I'll see videos of women doing their little vlog thing the way that I'm doing, you know? But their husband or their brother or their father or some dude who seems a little... um aggressive or lazy or like they've got some sort of mental breakdown going on in the background I just see them and you can see the way that the woman what what she's saying is being influenced by that man you know and you see that man pop up through all of their videos you know which for me it's okay if your husband supports you that's awesome like but are they sitting down next to you participating with you in what you're doing or are they in the background telling you, <laughs> are they back in the background making grunts? You know, one thing that I love about my husband is that 
he wants to be excited and uh, he, he's, he wants to encourage me and show me that he's excited about what I'm doing, but he also doesn't want to encroach on what my vision might be. He wants me to have the wings and the freedom to go out and basically spread my wings and, 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 and do what it is that I want to do, create what it is that I want to create. And sometimes what's beautiful is we create those things together, whether it be in the form of our business, whether it be in the form of particular projects that we might take on around the house to do together. But there are those other times where he is totally fine stepping back and letting me have my fun, have my creativity. Can you ask yourself, is that really the case in your relationship? Anyway, so... um. For weeks, so Ileana continues, for weeks the public and possibly the jury were curious, which curiously was not sequestered. Again, this is back on how this case was not handled like many others. Was bombarded with videos of her testifying about her alleged abuse at the hands of her now famous ex-husband, of her famous ex-husband. The videos, the videos were cut and memed and paired with disinformation to paint her as a harlot, a drunk, and a liar. So we've seen that with uh, Meghan Markle, how she has been painted as uh, a narcissist, as abusive, as, um, you know, who, who, who even knows? Who even knows? They accused her of faking evidence of bruises, of persuading witnesses to lie over the course of years. There's no evidence to support these claims. They called her Amber Turd and mocked the Me, Too, the Me Poo movement. Again, that's how abusers try to silence their victims and undermine certain causes. Audio of her crying on the stand trended on TikTok. So this right here, you know, I see this. I, I see this a whole lot in the UK, you know, honestly, with the 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 Meghan Markle trial. I'm sorry, not the Meghan Markle trial. I see this on YouTube a whole lot with Meghan Markle, where these crazy UK tabloid and, you know, gossip channels, UK gossip channels, will just be like creating stuff based off of lies. They're photoshopping gigantic tears on her face. They're warping her face to look a certain way. And they're all talking about things, about fake news things as reality, you know? They're talking about it as reality. And there is, albeit a smaller but existent movement like this in the U.S., and I do think a lot of those videos, um, you know, photoshopping bruises onto Amber's face and things like that. I have to believe some of those have UK producers or UK editors because their tabloids are really like that. But the fact that across the board, US or UK, whichever one, the fact that you see so much of this, so much of this is truly disturbing. Truly, truly disturbing. And something needs to be done about it because clearly people don't have the intellectual or emotional intelligence to discern what is fake news and what is real news. One of the first easiest ways is just check the source. I'm going to tell you what they told me in grad school and, and during my bachelor's. Even in high school, we learned this stuff. Check the source, baby. Check the source. Is it coming from a reputable source? Like, if it, even if it's not a, a scientific magazine, even if it's not National Geographic, is it coming from Time? Okay. Is it coming from the New York Times? Is it coming from The Economist? Is it coming from Pop Sugar Daily Gossip? <laughs> Pop, well, I got some news for you. Pop Sugar Daily Gossip is not a reputable source. And then one channel, you know, um, Daily Beast Swoop Gossip takes their source from Pop Sugar Daily Gossip and then it's just, you know, cycling on and on and on. Guys. So I'm going to end this. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but I want you to hear what um, kind of what happened with the drawers. So, legal experts did not expect Depp to win this defamation suit against his ex-wife, who wrote in the post-op ed that she spoke up with sexual abuse and faced our culture's wrath. 
Depp had already had a similar defamation suit against the tabloid The Sun and the UK. A British court found that The Sun's claim that Depp was a wife beater was substantially true and that Depp had physically abused Heard at least 12 different times. Now, I don't like The Sun, but on that one, I'm, I'm, I'm with him. He's a wife beater. Liana goes on to say how TikTok frame Heard as a bad victim, a quote unquote bad victim. So here we are with that again. It is unusual for a court case dealing with domestic abuse, abuse to be televised, even one involving famous actors. It's also unusual that a jury would not be instructed to sequester in such a case. The jury was notably made up of five men, five men and two women. So what's wrong with this? What's wrong with this? You know what's wrong with this. There is an unequal representation of men in this trial than women. If it would have been half and half, that would have been much more impartial. So going on, she says, studies show that men are more likely to accept rape myths and attribute higher levels of blame to victims than women do. Depp's supporters took full advantage of the ability to screen grab, meme, and manipulate images. There we go. There we go. So there's one point in the article where she says that in both cases, her legal team presented a lot of documentation of the alleged abuse including Depp implying he abused Heard in recordings as well as pictures of Heard's injuries. And yet, after weeks of social media picking apart Heard, the verdict in favor of Depp seemed inevitable. Confusingly, the jury also found that Depp's lawyer defamed Heard when he called her account of abuse a hoax. So that right there tells me that this jury was confused all around, you know? They had been super, like, hyper-influenced by all of the mess that was going on on social media. But then that emotional, intelligent part of them was saying, man, this is, this is a woman, and Deb did some terrible things to her. I know that she's she's telling the truth on some stuff. At least she's telling the truth on some stuff, but social media is saying that she is, she's lying and vindictive. So they were like, okay, so the lawyer calling her experience with abuse is a hoax. They're like, okay, no, no, no. We're going to come after that. But everything else, no, no. We, we've we been influenced. We got to be better than this, guys. Uh, please let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you in the next video. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. This is your girl, Najwa. Click the bell so you know whenever I post a video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.